Why do so many doctors and dentists offices have aquariums in their lobbies? Well, going to the doctor or the dentist is stressful. And so before we go under the knife or get drilled or get a colonoscopy or whatever, the idea is that that will calm us down and we'll have a, a less, uh, less bad experience, less stressful experience when we go get medical care. But is that really the case? And if it is, how do we know and how do we measure it? Like many others, I believe aquariums calm me down. I think they're good for my mental health because when I sit down in front of my aquarium and chill out and watch my fish, I feel good. But that's anecdotal, that's not scientific. Academics believe the same thing. They think there's a correlation between aquariums and mental health. And there's been lots of studies that they've created, a lot of papers that they've written claiming such, but very few of these studies actually prove any kind of mental health benefit. In order to prove something scientifically, we need measurable unbiased data that's presented in a repeatable manner. And most of the academic studies that have been done are not that. Most of them rely on experiential surveys where people fill out surveys telling them what their experience was. The problem with those is that everyone that's reporting is reporting according to their own bias. So the data points that are received are as biased as the people participating in the study. So that is why I was so excited recently when I came across a study that does have unbiased data, that is measurable and repeatable, and that's what I want to tell you about today. The study was headed up by Nancy E. Edwards. She's a professor of gerontology at the uh, Nurse Practitioner Program at Purdue University, and she is focused on trying to find ways to improve the well-being of Alzheimer's patients. And Alzheimer's disease is a big deal. One in 10 people get it by age 65, and by 85, almost half the population has Alzheimer's. What this means is this is a personal disease. The odds are that you or I are going to get Alzheimer's in our lifetime. Alzheimer's facilities have long been familiar with research that suggests a correlation between well-being and access to nature. There are studies that show that nature is good for our mental health. There's also studies that show that being deprived of access to nature is very stressful on human beings. This seems like common sense. So what Alzheimer's uh, care facilities have done is brought in pets for their patients to interact with, dogs and cats and rabbits and other furry creatures that are cute that the patients can pet and you know that can calm them down and they can get some interaction with nature that way. The problem is that these interactions require a handler. So for every pet that there is, interacting with an Alzheimer's patient, there has to be someone present to monitor that interaction. Because unfortunately, Alzheimer's patients um, are often confused, they can be irritated, they can be easily frightened. And so sometimes they end up pulling the hair on the animal or pulling on their ears or, or otherwise uh, acting inappropriately with the pets that are brought to interact with them. So Dr. Edwards and her team we're looking for more cost-effective ways to allow Alzheimer's patients to interact with nature, safer ways that Alzheimer's patients could interact with nature and get those benefits. And that's when they began focusing on studies with aquariums. Because when aquariums are properly set up, they're very safe. The, the patients don't actually come in contact with the fish and they don't require a handler. So there's not a lot of supervision necessary to put an aquarium in an Alzheimer's ward. That takes the cost way down. If you don't have to pay a handler for every interaction, your cost goes way, way down. So aquariums are cheaper, but are they effective? And if they're effective, can we measure how effective? So Dr. Edwards formulated a study that measures this effect in a quantifiable manner because it focuses on nutrition uptake. Nutrition uptake results in weight gain. You can measure weight gain or weight loss. So Dr. Edwards and her team wanted to see if aquariums would soothe the minds, the troubled minds of their Alzheimer's patients. And if they did, would they do it to the point that they could focus on eating better and they could stop that, that harmful weight loss? So here's the experiment they came up with. They worked with three long-term dementia units. There were 62 people in the study all told. And for three months, they regularly measured their body weight. What they found is that in those initial three months, the patients had lost an average of 1.71 pounds. What they did next, after that three month period, is they put an aquarium in the dining area in two of those facilities. The third facility did not receive an aquarium. 
In its place, they put a scenic painting of an ocean so that that third facility could act as a control group for the study. And once the aquariums and the painting were in place, they took an additional four months to regularly monitor the body weight of the patients to see if there was any effect. The genius of the study and why I was so excited to find it is because what they're measuring is quantifiable. They're not measuring uh, you marking down how something made you feel or anything like that, all that subjective stuff. They're measuring the results of nutrition uptake. So if the aquariums calm the patients down enough that they can focus on eating more, they can intake more nutrition, that will be reflected in body weight gain, which is measurable. And if they don't, that will be reflected in a continued loss of body weight. So by putting the aquariums in the dining room, we can actually measure the effect, the calming effect in terms of body benefit for Alzheimer's patients. It's pretty genius. So here's what happened. Here's the results of the study. And I'm gonna look at my notes on this because I wanna make sure I get these numbers right. 87% of the patients in facilities with aquariums in the dining area experienced weight gain. Within the first month, they gained an average of 1.65 pounds. And by the end of the study, by the end of that four, week, four month period where the aquariums were in the dining area, um, nutrition intake had increased by 27.1%. That's significant. So not only did having aquariums in the dining area calm folks down so they could focus on eating enough to curb their weight loss, it actually reversed it. They actually started gaining weight back. This is amazing news for Alzheimer's patients and for their families and for their caregivers. I knew I was onto something. To all you, all you aquarium fish geeks, all you aquarium hobbyists out there, it looks like we're actually onto something good. And instead of just thinking that, we finally have quantifiable evidence proving that. So if you want to know more about aquariums and aquarium keeping, if you're thinking that might be a good way to introduce nature in your life and get some of these benefits, um, we do a live stream on YouTube every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where it's a group of fish geeks get together and we answer questions that folks have about fish keeping, about uh, how to set up an aquarium to, to help get you started. We, we love doing that. And if you're in the market for aquarium fish, we've got you covered here at dancefish.com. We have a lot of amazing fish available, so feel free to come on over and look around. Anyways, thanks for watching, folks. Until next time, have a good one. Bye-bye.